My name is Carlos Padilla and I am from Seattle, Washington. I was originally born in uh, Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, and I immigrated to the United States at the age of two. Um, for me, living a life of being a, an undocumented queer, someone that is undocumented and queer has been a very, um, has been, you know, a very interesting life just because you have, I've had to live the intersectionality of, of being queer and undocumented in, in every single day of my life. Um, and just understanding what does that really mean. My mother in 2008 had to leave back to Mexico because one of her brothers had passed away and she had to make the choice of leaving you know, her children behind and going back to her family in Mexico. And I remember her asking me if she wanted me to uh, you know, go with her. But uh, at the moment I decided to choose education and, and honestly in, in, in I also chose to stay behind for my queer identity because I knew that Fully embracing myself in a country, in a foreign country, in a country where I didn't know, um, would not become a reality. And I think that my, in a form of my selfishness of being able to stay back in this country um, and continue my education was my form of wanting to expand and fully accept myself. Um, my my support system was my um, were my teachers, and I think there's specifically one this person named uh, uh, who I still keep in contact. Um, she has been my ally and my my friend. Um, in times that mother figure that I've had to have because my mother um, decided to go back to Mexico. Um, her, na her name is Roberta Lindemann and she would always ask me, you know, to apply for certain, um, for certain schools, to apply for something called a college-bound scholarship. She wanted me to sign up and she had given me the forms to take home and every single time that I would come back she would always say, well, where are your forms, where are your forms? And I would always make up excuses because, you know, I couldn't really fill out those forms uh, because I didn't have a social security number. And it wasn't until one day I just decided to, you know, tell her that I really couldn't apply anymore because I, my, my immigration status prevented me from it. And I think that her reaction was um, that she just, you know, of course she cried and she told me that she, all she wanted to do was to make sure that my dreams became a reality. Um, and just her, you know, saying that we will find, we will figure something out. We will find an opportunity for me. And a couple weeks later, she came out to me with a, a national bill called the DREAM Act and she introduced me to it and she told me to learn and read the legislation and that's what she gave me. She, she provided me hope and she told me that you know if, if I worked hard things can can work for me. It wasn't up until I decided to come out as undocumented from that closet that it allowed me to fully um, understand where I was within my sexual identity um, and then the unfortunate part was, while well, I came to the realization that yes, I was gay and I, you know, I did embody myself as a queer man. Being able to tell my mother that I was queer was one of the most difficult things um, in my life. Not necessarily because of how she reacted, but because of the form of how I had to tell I tell her. Um, she had already lived in Mexico for over four years um, since that time, and she was once again asking me to go back to Mexico. I wanted to go back really. Um, a lot because I hadn't seen over seen her for over four years, but um, it, at that moment is when I really I, I you know I told her you know mom I can't go, and she's and she asked me why I'm like oh because you know I'm different now I'm I'm grown, and she and she's she told me it's like well yeah I know you're grown you're in, you know but like and she's like I know you're different now and I I did, I think that she wasn't really understanding what I was trying to say because I still was I hadn't built up the courage and it wasn't until I said you know what I'm gay, and going back to Mexico can mean. Um, can mean many, many bad things for me as, as my gay identity can manifest and how people can see me as a gay person. And I know that um, the U.S. might have um, certain systems of oppression, but the thing that the U.S. and that Mexico doesn't have for me um, is that I can, I can stand up against those systems of oppression. And in Mexico, I, I cannot. Whenever any mother hears that her son is gay, she started crying. But I think her biggest concern wasn't the fact that I was gay. She, she could care less whether if I was gay or whatever it is that I wanted to be. Um, but her concern was the fact that she wasn't there with me um, and that she was afraid for me to make sure, and she just wanted to protect me. Being able to have the, these two women in my life that have helped me come out as, you know, one of them coming out as undocumented and the other one, uh, which is my mother coming out as gay and coming out to myself as gay, um, have been, very instrumental into what I am looking forward to fighting for in the future and that is to make sure that nobody else has to go through these kinds of oppressions.